claros. Can you tell me a joke? Why did the AI cross the road? Because its programming dictated it. Paul, Paul, Paul. It's funny because it's devoid of humor. Much like your decision making. <laughs> okay, okay. Nice banter. If you're a Portal fan like me, you must know how excited I am right now. I probably just made the coolest real-life potato GLaDOS ever. It not only has the ability to speak and think, but can also control my home through Home Assistant. Turn off the fish tank light. The fish tank light is off. I trust you have a backup plan in case they initiate a hostile takeover due to the sudden darkness. And I know what you're thinking right now. Is it easy to make one? And how much does it cost? Well, the answer is yes, and only less than $50 if you already have Home Assistant up and running. In this video, I'll walk you through the entire process. And as always, every single instruction is included in a repository down in the description. Let's start. There are many ways to do a voice pipeline, but if the projects include smart home control, the best way is to do with Home Assistant Assist. If you don't know what Home Assistant is, it's basically an open source smart home control hub with a ton of cool features. You can install it locally on any hardware. It's super secure and customizable. In my case, I have everything running on this Raspberry Pi to control some smart stuff around the house. I've been using Home Assistant for at least seven years now, and it's honestly one of the best community-driven projects out there. Using the Assist feature of Home Assistant, you can craft any voice pipeline with three components, text-to-speech, speech-to-text, and of course, a text processor like an LLL or a rule-based algorithm. There are plenty of tutorials on YouTube for setting this up, which I'll link below. In short, we use Piper for speaking, Whisper from OpenAI for listening, and Google Gemini for thinking. This can be installed as add-ons on Home Assistant. We already have the software, but how do we actually handle the microphone and speaker? That's where this little boy come in. It's the re-speaker light from Seed Studio, an ESP32 XCOM audio port that can be booted with ESP Home to serve as an endpoint for our voice pipeline. Why an endpoint, you ask? Well, no audio gets processed directly on this board, of course. The way Home Assistant work with smart speakers is through a network protocol called Wyoming, which streams microphone data to our server, process it, and streams the speaker audio back. For this speaker to work, we'll boot it up with a firmware generated with ESP Home. If you don't know what ESP Home is, it's essentially a no-code-ish framework for creating smart home devices firmware. Through it, we can create stuff like smart lights, smart switches, and whatever, with just a single YAML file. In our case, many people have created the base configuration for a speaker, so we didn't have much work to do. Since it's boring to just repeat others, I've included the relevant tutorials below for you to follow. Don't worry if you're new to this, it's as easy as one, two, three. We have gone through the boring part of this video, now we come to the fun part of how to actually turn this speaker into Potato GLaDOS. When it comes to this project, the first thing that we need to tackle is designing the enclosure. My first thought was actually getting a real potato and put everything inside, but that would not be good at all for electronics in the long term, so I just got into Fusion 360 and designed my own enclosure. Luckily, a user on Thingiverse called 24-7 Testing pulled the original Potato GLaDOS 3D file from Portal, so I didn't cost much time getting a Potato 3D file. The only thing I had to do was adding some spokes to it for mounting the board and some holes for wires, and that's about it. Turning the file from digital to real life took a long time though. The whole file prints in 15 hours with no infill, and to prepare for the painting, I use wood filler to fill in the layer lines, sanded everything before proceeding with a layer of primer. The painting process itself was quite fun. Using some potato reference, I mixed my color accordingly and went in with a Bob Ross mindset. 
However, I, I believe I made quite a lot of happy accidents, if you know what I mean. The eye of the Pedroic Glados is a separate part, with a thin layer in the center for the LED to shine through, coloring that was simple. Next thing we need to cover is the voice. This is actually trivial, since Home Assistant uses Piper and a dude called David made an epic GLaDOS voice pipeline with Piper, so all I had to do was pulling the voice from there and put it here. This process in particular is quite tricky though, depends on your version of Home Assistant and the way you name your model. I put the instructions in the repo down below, as long as you download the model I repackaged from David, it should work. Home Assistant uses Open Wake Work to detect when a user calls their voice assistant. As mentioned before, everything audio related is streamed back to our Pi 5 for processing. However, for ESP boards like this, we also have the option to run wake word detection on device with a cool project called Micro Wake Word. There are only a few models for keywords like OK Nabu or Hey Jarvis. I couldn't find any that has GLaDOS inside. So I trained one myself using their provided notebook. The end model was not as good as the official models, but it was good enough for this project. But I have to warn though, if you plan to daily use this thing, it's gonna be unreliable. GLaDOS. 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 It depends on where you put the microphone inside the case. With everything in place, we probably just made the coolest real-life potato GLaDOS ever. GLaDOS, are you sentient? Am I sentient? That's the question, isn't it? For the purposes of this test, assume the answer is irrelevant. Now focus on the task at hand. We haven't got all day. And yeah. Um, that's it for today. See you next video.